To begin looking at this example, start a new inch part and save the file as your initials dash SW fund 10 EI 3.4.1. When completing the custom properties, you can use sketch offsets as the part description. On the top plane, start a sketch. We're going to start by sketching a line that starts at the origin and goes horizontally about 3 inches. Next, move up and to the right about 4 inches, and finally to the right horizontally about 2 inches. With the three lines sketched, we can use smart dimensions to make the angle of the angled line to be at a 45 degree incline by selecting the angled line and then the horizontal line. You can control what angular dimension you're adding by where you drop the dimension. So, with the dimension dropped, enter 45 degrees. We can then dimension the overall height of the sketch to be 3 inches. And the overall length of the sketch to be 8 inches. Use a sketch relation to make the two horizontal lines equal. And finally, add a 2 inch fillet to both of the intersection points. Now we're ready to use the offset tool. On the command manager or the shortcut menu, select the offset tool. In the property manager, we can enter an offset value of half of an inch and then select the bottom left line on the sketch. Because select chain is checked, the whole chain or series of lines has been used for our offset. If we unselect select chain, then we'll just offset the short line we selected. And we could continue selecting more edges to offset. Now we did want that whole chain to be offset, so I'm going to again activate the select chain option. The reverse checkbox controls what side of the chain the offset goes to. And the bidirectional checkbox makes the chain offset to both sides. The bidirectional offset doesn't use the same logic as a midplane extruded feature. With a midplane extruded feature, the overall extrude depth is split 50-50 each way. So if we're doing a midplane extrude of one inch, then we're going half an inch in each direction. But when we're using a bidirectional offset, we're applying the offset value to both sides. So in our case, if the offset is half of an inch, then the overall width is going to be one inch. The other option we want to check is make base construction. This option makes the initial geometry construction geometry. Finally, we're going to use the cap ends option and add tangent arcs to the end of the chain. This option only works when you're creating a bi-directional offset. You should also notice that with the cap ends option, you can cap the ends with arcs or with lines. But again, we want to use arcs for this example, so make sure arcs is selected. With the properties for the offset set, we can select OK. Finally, use a circle tool to add a circle at the center point of both of the arcs and add a relation to make both of the circles the same diameter. Finally, dimension one of the circles to be half of an inch in diameter. We're now going to use a boss extrude with a mid-plane end condition. And use a depth of half of an inch. With the solid created, click the large front face and start a sketch. We're going to create a couple offsets, so click the thumbtack to keep the offset tool active. Now, the first offset we're going to create will have a distance of 3 16 of an inch, or decimal 1875. We don't want to use a bidirectional offset, so make sure that's not checked. And then we can select the top face of the part. So in this example, we didn't actually select sketch geometry, we selected a face, and as you can see, we're offsetting the whole outer profile of this face. We can now control the side of the offset with the reverse offset 
checkbox. Or just by what side of the profile we click to create the offset. So click on the inside of the part to offset inwards. With the offset tool still active, select each of the circles and offset them to the outside of the circle. With all three offsets created, we can select OK to close the offset tool. Now to finish up this sketch, we're going to use a power trim. So press S on your keyboard to activate the shortcut menu and select the trim tool. Make sure power trim is set and then trim away the unneeded sketch geometry. With the geometry trimmed, activate the fillet tool and enter a radius of 3 16 of an inch. We can then radius the four sharp corners we just created after trimming the geometry. This next step may seem a little bit odd, but it's going to make sense in a moment. Select Cut Extrude and do a through all cut extrude to cut through the entire part. Now on the top plane, we're again going to create a sketch. What we're going to be doing here is creating a rib through the center of the part. To get a profile that perfectly matches the hole created by our last cut, select Sketch 2 on the Feature Tree. Then, on the Sketch Tools toolbar, click Convert Entities. Convert Entities copies over the geometry from another sketch onto our current sketch. As a side note, you can also use Convert Entities the same way we used an offset, by selecting a face or another edge on the part. With our geometry copied over, we're now going to create a mid-plane extrude and extrude it to a thickness of 0.1875. And select OK. So the main thing I was wanting to show you here is how to use a sketch offset and also the Convert Entities tool, but I do also want to draw attention to the importance of using mid-plane extrudes. We used mid-plane extrudes to our advantage and really made the modeling of this part a lot simpler. At this point, you can save your part and leave it open, because we're going to be using it as a basis for our next segment.